Hey beautiful people, welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you are brand new and just happen to stumble upon this right now today, thank you so much for clicking on the video. Please hit the subscribe button. Please like. Please, it's free. Thank you. Alrighty, for those of you who are returning subscribers, viewers, likers of things, all two of you, thank you so much, Lena. For someone who is so inconsistent, I'm the queen of inconsistency. But anyway, we're trying something different this year. Happy New Year, Happy New Month. Now that January is done and we're in February and all the peer pressure, yeah, New Year, New Me, New Year's resolutions is done. I feel like now we can do the right thing and enter the year properly. Happy New Year, Batumba Mudimu. Are you happy to be in the new year or not or are you a bit <laughs> defeated already like i am i feel like 2024 has been a new year and if it were me would jump right to 2025 but anyway we can't do that we don't always get what we want so on today's video i wanted to speak to my varsity students i know they make up quite a big chunk of the people in this channel or the people in this community in this home or the people that are living in this house with me i wanted to speak directly to them why first of all i deal with them on almost a daily basis and sometimes sometimes i feel like i could just shake them open because why are you being like this so today i want us to start off properly classes haven't started yet so i thought this might be just me extending an olive branch to you if you are a varsity student whether you're brand new you've just registered you're currently registering and you are wondering what is next firstly i'll start off with the newcomers the first year students you've just finished registering or you're busy registering and you have your timetable you have all your book list you have um essentially your whole life ahead of you from this point on and you're just wondering where to from here let's start off from the very beginning if you've just completed your matric and you've just got an admission into your university of choice congratulations you did that you did that you put in the hard work and it has paid off up to this point unfortunately it doesn't end there life does not end here where you start with varsity and you forget about everything else i wish it did but unfortunately it doesn't i want us to start off properly because what you do now the choices you make right now how you prefer to start off right now how you want to start this race will determine how your race ends okay <sighs> i'm out of breath and i don't know why so i want us to set the foundation properly and this will start off with your big why for most of you you might have ended up in a course that was your first choice and it's what you wanted to do and it's what you've been wanting to do and you're happy to be here and you cannot wait and you're excited and that's amazing for those of you who ended up in a course that is your second or third option because your first option was full or you had to do something because your parents wouldn't let you just sit at home and do nothing or you just took what was available if this happens to be you i'm so sorry to hear but unfortunately we have to make the most of it while we're here there's a saying about life giving you lemons and whatever lemonades and whatever i'm on here to say it's not a coincidence that you had to end up where you are in as much as it wasn't in your plans it's not what you were studying towards or it's not what you want to become at the end of the day you'd be surprised you'd be surprised what might come out of this sticky situation you're in right now so if it happens that now you're in a course whether you want to do it or not now we start with a big why even if it's not what you wanted to do let's now start with our big why why are you here why this course? Why this institution? Why here right now? And most importantly, why you right now? I'll go first. I'll start off with an example. I'll start off with an example. You don't have to answer me now. For instance, when I got enrolled as a... S Neighbors are annoying. When I got enrolled as a civil engineering student, it was my very first option. And I had been in a technical high school before I had enrolled um as a civil engineering student i wanted to do civil engineering because i wanted to know the behind the scenes of what happens for a building to stand upright and not collapse 
I was interested in what goes into making a structure and that led me to civil engineering and from civil engineering it led me to structural engineering what did I end up doing after school exactly that I ended up in a design office and I ended up designing some structures some roads some sewer stormwater lines some whatever long story short the big why led me to where I was or to where I am today so now back to you why are you here why this place why this institution your why may be big or it might be small it might be as easy as i wanted to get as far away as possible from my family because they're toxic and water water that is valid we're not going to invalidate that it may be that you you you're studying medicine because you want to become a doctor and save lives it may be that you're studying art because you have a creative urge to express yourself and that is completely valid but you need to know why you're here because the reason why your big why will be what keeps you in this place and i i don't i'm I don't, not trying to sound philosophical about it and whatever because it's gonna get tough whatever course you're doing it's gonna get tough and there will be days when you ask yourself why am i even suffering this much and your big why is gonna answer you okay so you need to make sure that your foundation is stable and how you are gonna find your footprint to your big why will be in your self reflection in the goals you set your strengths and weaknesses, who you are as a person, who you're trying to become, and the environment around you. So let's start off with some self-reflection. Let's look back at you as a person. Let's look at your posture, you know, let's reevaluate. Let's look inwardly. Let's look at who you are as a person. For instance, let's look at Tenulo as a person. Who is she? What does she like? What does she not like? What interests her? What does not interest her? What makes her tick? What makes her a ticking time bomb? What makes her happy? What makes her sad? What are her values? What motivates her? What demotivates her? What makes her want to participate and show up? And what makes her not want to participate and show up? Knowing this, just this small blueprint of who you are will save you a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of resources when you are in varsity because the fact that your parents are not here doesn't mean you are yay you you're not free it doesn't mean now you are out of jail you yay you now get to do as you please and you can do as you please by the way no one's gonna stop you no one's gonna force you to do anything but it doesn't mean that now that you can do anything you want and that you can do as you please it doesn't mean you get away with everything because Whatever it is that you're doing, you're busy sowing some seeds and you will reap the rewards of the seeds that you're sowing, okay? So it's important to know you as a person. Know, like know yourself to the core before anyone else can come and tell you who you are. Because anyone who can come and tell you who you are before you define who you are to yourself, it means that person has a lot of power over you and that is not what you're trying to deal with especially in our university in varsity there is a lot of new things there's a lot of freedom there's a lot of peer pressure and there's a lot of freedom to fall into peer pressure whether you're aware of it or not especially those of us who were raised very coddled very protected from normal life and society you are going to be introduced to alcohol you are going to be introduced to narcotics you're going to be introduced to smoking and drinking and partying every weekend you are gonna be introduced to a whole catalog of boys and girls that you've never seen before speaking different languages they have different colors different hey you will be introduced to all of it and if you are gonna decide that way now you're gonna treat varsity like a buffet and you're gonna have everything that is served to you on a silver platter baby girl mm -mm. Baby boy. Mm -mm. So decide from the from decide from the onset. This is what I'm about. This is what I'm not about, and this is how I'm gonna get into it. Along the lines of knowing yourself, you will know what your strong points are and what your weak points are. For instance, do you know how to keep time? Are you good at keeping time, or are you bad at keeping time? Is it something that you need to put a little bit of work into? This will help with making it to your lectures on time and allocating time to studying for your different subjects, your tests, your projects, completing anything that you need to do on time. How are you when it comes to time management? How are you when it comes to communication? Because now that mom and dad are not here, it means you need to speak up for yourself it means you need to articulate yourself in a way that another adult 
can understand you. You're not going to say, my mommy said, you want this and you need to now extend that so that the next person can comprehend what you're saying. Are you able to communicate effectively? Are you a person who cuts people off? Are you a person who knows how to listen? Are you a person who interrupts people? Are you a person who just doesn't want to listen to another person's point of view? Are you a person who talks nonstop? Are you a person who just doesn't know when to stop? Or are you a person who doesn't talk at all? Are you a person who mumbles when they talk? Do you know how to communicate effectively? Do you know how to ask for what you want in a way that does not infringe on the next person? Nah, this is what you need to be reflecting on. And if you're a person in high school who never spoke to anyone, you were a loner and you like to keep to yourself, if it works for you, that's fine. But when it comes to varsity and the part where cost starts clapping you, you're gonna need a community of people in your corner and you better start speaking up very fast. The next we're gonna tackle a little bit about setting goals. And this is not just you know, New Year's resolutions, this is New Year, New Me, I want to pass and get distinctions only. No, I'm talking about both personal goals as well as academic goals. I'll start with academic goals because that one's easy. You go into a new year with a game plan and you'll try your best to stick to it, but life happens, okay? We're not going to sit here and pretend like once you're in varsity, you're protected from life. Life is going to happen, but you need a plan. Okay, and you need a plan that is going to work for you and that will essentially be life proof. Okay, you need a plan that will say, this is the time I'm going to wake up in the morning every day. I'm going to have my breakfast every single morning, non-negotiable. <clears throat> I'm going to try and exercise at least three to four times a week. I am going to take care of my health. I'll try as much as I can not to eat junk and rubbish and whatever. And this is how much time i will allocate to my studies every single day those five non-negotiables i feel like these five there's probably more but i feel like these five are the ones that could set the foundation for how you live your life that way when a friend comes on a sunday morning and says let's go to the mall and you know that you need to study from 10 a.m until 2 p.m then you can easily turn them down and say that will be my study time I'm so sorry, let's try tomorrow, okay? Setting those non-negotiables from the onset will save you. Listen to me. It will save you. I had a friend back in varsity. I'm not gonna name her, but she knows herself. I had a friend back in varsity. We were at the exact same level doing the exact same course, right? So it happened that because I had been in a technical high school, I had background on engineering graphics and design it's like technical drawing i had a background on drawing and a lot of the stuff we did in our first year um specifically about drawing whatever we did in that first first semester are things that i had done in high school over the last three years right and so a lot of it was not new and i'll then extend my hand to help those who did not go to technical high schools so that they could you know get some extra assistance so that we could all do well and pass but this han when she got to the var she was very beautiful she still is and very early on baby girl was in a serious relationship then we used to use friday nights as our our practice runs where out you know our sister was drawing so that when we're writing tests and whatnot she could also perform well baby girl started to bunk our drawing dates so she could go bond with her boyfriend which is okay it's fine but it made us fight quite a lot because here i am trying to help you and you are not being helpable because we're now you're in a relationship and this is why i'll tell my students every single year every single semester pick a lane and just decide to run your race in that lane what like come rain or shine pick a lane and stay in it and the reason i say this is because I don't see how you can get to varsity, right? And decide that you're going to be an A student. You are going to be at every single party and groove and whatever. And you are going to be somebody's wife. And then you're going to be a social butterfly with all your friends. And you're going to keep up with all the social trends. And you're still going to be sane and healthy. There's no way. Pick a lane. Pick a lane and stick to it. So long story short, obviously things didn't really go well for her in terms of that subject. But I, I also felt offended from a personal point of view because there's these people that are asking you, Wena, why are you passing and your friend is failing? How am I supposed to answer that when I try to help you and you're not helpable? 
But anyway, pick a lane. That's all I'm saying. Pick a lane, pick a lane, pick a lane. So when you're setting your goals, make sure that your goals are non-negotiable. I easily could have gone and chilled with my boyfriend on that Friday night as well. But I decided that until 9 p.m. on a Friday, I'm busy with my schoolwork. I'll see you afterwards or I'll see you tomorrow. Like, you're not dying, you know? So set your goals, set your goals and make sure you stick to them. Alongside your academic goals, you have your personal goals. And these ones, I feel like, I feel like they go hand in hand because if your personal goals are teka ticking, then it's most likely to infringe on your academic goals. You either end up being a complete book nerd and you don't have friends, you don't have a life, you have nowhere to run to when there's a crisis and you're just the weirdo in the class, or you end up just being this person who's not serious about life. You go to groove all the time because where now you value being outside more than your books, you know? So keep them in balance. On your list of personal goals, you will have your spiritual goals your physical mental and emotional well-being goals like <clears throat> all of these count your spiritual goals will be how you decide to now maintain your spiritual life whatever it looks like if you were going to church every sunday at home are you gonna keep going to church every sunday now that you're here are you gonna find a church are you gonna find a new church are you gonna join another like how are you gonna make sure that you maintain the spiritual relationship that you had with whatever higher being that you pray to or worship or believe in your physical i've already touched on it a little bit are you now going to exercise are you going to clean up your diet are you going to join a new diet how will you make sure that you are at your peak performance physical wise how are you going to take care of your body your emotional goals your emotional well-being here how are you going to make sure that your emotional bank is your emotional bank is kept healthy okay and at that age where you're 18, 19, somewhere around there, it might be hard to realize that your emotional well-being, it has a bank account of its own and the stuff that you subject yourself to as a human being are what's giving or taking. It's either depositing or withdrawing from your emotional bank. How are you going to keep this bank healthy? Do you keep friends that are not good for you? Do you keep friends that make you feel good, but they're not really your friends? Do you keep people around you just so you have people to gossip with? Are you in touch with your family? How's the relationship with your family? How are you keeping your emotional bank account at a steady level and at an above water level? The reason I'm saying this is because you're in varsity now, but soon you'll be out of varsity. You'll either start working or you decide to start your own business, but soon you'll be in the real world and you'll be dealing with real people. And you need to now have enough skills to participate in the real world as an adult without running back to your mom and dad. So make sure that your emotional bank account is kept healthy, your mental state. And I know varsity is the one place, the one place that will challenge your mental state until you feel like you've gone mad. And I keep saying to my student, if you don't go mad at least once in your study life, you are not doing it right and i'm not i'm not condoning i'm not condoning madness i'm just saying with the course that i studied at the time that i studied it and the amount of punches it served me it it was only fitting for me to go mad at that time and knowing my students that they study exactly what i studied probably 10 times harder now you have to go mad at least once, but you need to find your way back to self. The emphasis is not on going mad. The emphasis is on coming back to yourself. After you've gone mad, you need to now crawl back to yourself. And this journey back to self will serve you in the long run. Because when you become an adult and life claps you again, when you get into a relationship and it claps you, when you try to get a new job and it claps you, when life just serves you lemons that are rotten over and over again, you will use this exact blueprint. This journey back to self that you used in varsity, you will depend on that for the rest of your life. I kid you not. I kid you not. The quicker you master it, the faster you master it, the better. Because when someone tries you and someone leaves you on the edge of a cliff and you are seeing Satan or his kids, you'll know, you'll know the way back to self. So you have to, you just must. The quicker you go mad, the quicker you can come back to self, the quicker you can return to self. The emphasis is not on going mad. The emphasis is on returning to yourself, baby girl. Okay? So this journey where you go mad and you lose your shits, 
you lose your sleep, you're barely eating, you're studying 24 hours a day, you have classes 24 hours a day, your boyfriend is trash, your friend is nonsense, and everything is happening, everything is happening and you're still keeping up your good grades, you still look decent, you still look nice, and you still manage to shower every day. The part where you master the balance between life giving you shit and you showing up, that is the part where you learn how to be an adult. And the quicker you master this balancing act, the better for you. The better for you. In closing, I don't mean to scare anyone with what varsity is about to do to you, for you, with you. This is not meant to scare anyone. It's just meant to say, welcome to the rest of your life. And how you decide to show up in this part depends on you completely. It's very easy to mess up and it's very easy to do well. But just know nobody figured it out on the first try. And those who did, didn't get there without a scratch or without a fight. But I'm gonna leave you with this. Whenever it gets hard, always know that there is always someone to run to. You may feel like you're alone. You may feel like, oh my gosh, I'm just in this hell hole all on my own i'm sure there's always someone to run to it's either a classmate a lecturer counseling services on campus your residence mom a lady selling tomatoes on the street a cashier a therapist if you're able to afford one but do not ever ever try to take all of this on your own it will kill you trying that's it from me all the best with the rest of your academic year. And remember, if you ever need a shoulder, a hand, someone to help you, someone to hold your hand, someone to say it's going to be okay, I'm willing to be that person. Not because I have all the time in the world, but I don't think people should, should be doing life on their own. I don't think it's fair for anyone to ever feel like they're forced to go through anything on their own. So if you feel like you ever need to reach out, courses clapping you and everything is just looking upside down, I'll leave my email down below and feel free to reach out even if it's just to say hi i don't bite or i try not to bite on most days if you enjoyed this video please don't tell anyone about it Mwah.